second gen RX-7 being one of them. We don't see many out here in Formula D, but Jeremy proving that it's a it's a contender. And you proved it yourself too with the top four finish. Uh, I believe it's the highest finishing Mazda ever. I think actually uh, me and uh, JTP oh, you're right. are right up in there. Oh, Jeremy making some contact. Into the wall. Oh. Again. Oh, that's Man. too bad. You know, he was really definitely trying everything he could to get that RX-7 off the wall. And as long as Brian's able to complete this run, I think that's going to be an easy victory for him. I'm sure Jeremy disappointed, but, you know, he, he is in the top 16. That's a great uh, standing for him this year. And I'm sure some people are going to take notice. Yeah, we were talking about it a little bit in the halftime show, too, um, with Pat Gooden, who's his Njuka Racing teammate, that really a lot of these guys, their their biggest goal as a privateer is to make a top 16 singular. So oh, absolutely. This I mean, is a huge accomplishment for him. I think people underestimate how difficult it is even to make the top 32. There's so many drivers that come out every weekend and, and don't even make it to Saturday's event. So the fact that he's in the top 16, uh, I you know, I remember those days. and. I'm having one of them right now. I wish I had yeah. made the top 32 or 16. So definitely a good job for J-Lo, and I'm sure Turk's going to be very happy uh, to be able to uh, move on here depending on what the damage is. Yeah, huge accomplishment for him. We'll have him check and make sure that nothing's broken, nothing's dragging. Um, there may have been some, some suspension damage, so we'll see if he has some backup arms. You know, as a personal Mazda owner and uh, FC driver, and one of the nice things about them is, is those parts are pretty resilient under there. I know I've uh, done a similar wall ride here in Seattle with my RX-7. We were able to fix it pretty quickly. I think, uh, you know, you may get lucky and be able to get another run out there, but unfortunately, I know uh, Ryan's already got a pretty big advantage, so it's going to be a, a team call, I'm sure, on whether or not they try to put that back together or, or how bad the damage is. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, Looks like the tow trucks are coming out. So yeah, my, that door might not open, actually, with the damage on that side. might have bent the frame oh. or something. There it goes. So, again, this FCRX7 chassis is one that's been campaigned by a couple of drivers. Justin Pollock had one in his privateer days before joining Bergenholz Racing and now Falcon Tire Racing. And, Kyle, you had one that was started off white and is currently... The purple people eater. Yeah, we actually uh, ran that for three years in Formula Drift. Then we ran a red line time attack with it and uh, won the uh, Drift Championship. Uh, beat Conrad Grunold in his Camaro. Got to throw that in there. And uh, now that car is actually over in China competing in the WDS series where it's sixth in points. And, uh, you know, that's uh, another just uh, proving point about how versatile these RX-7 chassis are. So if you're into drifting and you're looking for a wheel-wheel drive car, that's definitely one to look at. Yeah, again, J-Lo having some great support from some guys like Njuka Racing, BC Suspension, Falcon Tires, Njuka is a, a great